what's up guys, Benny here and welcome to another episode of Benny's Bootcamp where I have a 40 kill gameplay from Jukies who's probably one of the best players in the game right now. He won the 100k tournament syndicate Sundays, dropping 33 kills in the final and now he's sent me this gameplay to go over and see what he does to make him such a good player. Also, 85.1% of you watching this video right now are not subscribed to the channel, so make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on another video. But he starts off picking up the FAMAS and the the thing I would really want you to pick onto with his gameplay is the way that he just snaps onto opponents. So he's also started the game off at Superstore, which is the place you want to be for high kill games. You can leave here with like 30, like, well, not 30, but like 10 kills right at the start before you even get your loadout. But hold on, let's just, just go back and watch this. This, this sequence is disgusting, right? So he just jump shots in there and... This is one thing I've noticed when watching Jukies is every single time he does some sort of movement to give him an advantage of gunfight. So he jump shots in here, picks up that shot, and then instantly knows the player's coming and pre-aims that corner so he can pick up a triple kill right off the bat of the game. It's, 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 it's the start you want for a 40 kill game, and it's, it's, it's so nice to see as well. Okay, so the next thing that they've managed to do is get their loadouts pretty pretty darn quickly. They've still got they haven't met anyone else in Superstore, which is quite surprising. But picks three kills up in Superstore at the start of the game, and then has his loadout with 140 players still in the game. Um, and let's just quickly have a look at the class that he decides to pick. So he he goes for a the like it's a class that I see a lot of top players running. It's the Growl with the MP5 combo. Um, I'll put the class down in the description for you guys so you can use it yourself. He's also using double time so he can run around as quickly as he can and pull off flanks uh overkill so he's got both the assault rifle and the smg and then amped so he can switch between them quite quickly and then he also runs semtex and a stun stun grenades are incredible in warzone because no one runs battle hardened to counter them uh downside is is you need to make sure you get restock on the second uh loadout drop so one thing I really want to point out with these high kill gameplays is you'll notice uh, the team tends to split up and kind of go and kind of control their own quadrants of the map and also use vehicles to get around as quickly as possible. Uh, switches to his growl here because it's a medium range fight. And what he does, which is what not a lot of people do, is doesn't thirst straight away, expects a teammate to come and attack him. So just waits a second before going for the thirst. Other teammates pushed him now and his teammate, I believe, gets a UAV in to just cool into this, you know, so he now knows the enemy locations. He's knows he's down the person in the hangar to his right. He knows this is the final player on the team. Um, threw a stun to try and get him, get him quickly. Mid-range fight, picks him up with a growl. Another three easy kills and a squad wipe um, without even really taking a scratch, which is insane. He's now seen someone else on the UAV, so switches to his MP5 so he can close that gap a little bit quicker. He's all, One thing as well to just notice is what, look, look at the way that he approaches the gunfight. So he knows he's on the right-hand side and his crosshairs does not leave that corner so he can snap on as quickly as he can and picks up that kill. It's just really nice, aggressive play, stuff you really want to see. All right, so he's seen some more players thanks to the UAV on his minimap. And he's, what, I, what I love is he uses the MP5 to kind of close distances just because he's got higher mobility whilst using the MP5. And then when it's a potential mid-range gunfight, he always tries to get the um, the growl out just so he can just, just beam, beam the enemy players. Straight away, MP5, Picks up one, picks up two, looking for the third. That is that is disgusting. I right, knows one of them must have a um a self res, but that's it. That's straight away. He's already on 10 kills. Just, just, well, let's, let's just watch that again because it was so clean. This is how to approach a gunfight um in inside a building. Right? So he, he MP5, it's the reason this combo works so well, is shreds up close, MP5, straight away, downs one, downs two. Right, and a straight way onto the third, really keeping those lines really tight, which is the which is the key. It's like they didn't even get a chance to shoot at him, um, <laughs> which is just how you want to be playing. What you'll also notice a lot of uh, top players do is always try and get a hold of helicopters because they're so good at moving around the map and also getting a strong map position because you can get on top of a building easily. You can push enemy squads um, without having a fear of being hit by a C4 and you can also cover the most ground. So if you go for high kill games, keeping a hold of a chopper for the duration of a match is going to be a huge, huge advantage. Straight away, it's a bit of a mid-range gunfight, so he uses the growl but then switches to the MP5. Oh, this! Oh, this is this is this is risky. He's got no plates left. I really like as well the the, the amount he uses his frag grenades, which I don't see that many players use as much. And he, he makes sure that they're like they they're fully like kind of 
holds it down to the wire so they go off without the other player getting a chance. And just the MP5, it's so good. 12 kills, slides in. That's that's also a point, right? Is you'll notice top players do this all the time. Every time they approach a gunfight, they're always doing something to get an edge on, whether it's positioning. It looks easy and it makes players look bad, even if they're not, if you're doing things correctly. So here, he knows he's pushing him. He slides into the door just to kind of, like, just kind of get a small advantage because he, he comes in lower, has a bit of momentum behind him and can get into that ADS as quickly as he can. And that's how he's picked up those three kills. And oh, wow. Okay, uh, that is, that is, in fairness, he gets quite lucky here. So he pops up and then straight away does the jump. You may, you may notice it is he does the best out of a bad situation. Most people there would have just stood there and just kind of fought normally, but he jump shots, then jumps backwards, make it a little bit harder for the enemy player to land those shots, um, but really nicely done. And he's on 13 kills already and also still has his chopper, which is important. Uh, you'll also notice in a little panic there is he grabbed someone else's weapons just because of uh, because of like everything going on. S has had a call out from his teammates, a couple people on the roof. This is always a tough fight. I, I, you never really want to be in those situations. When someone's on a roof, they can easily duck out, but he's got the chopper, as I mentioned earlier, which is going to allow him to push the high ground and then suddenly have an advantage on his opponent. Always be looking at getting advantage, some kind of advantage, every single gunfight. You never want to have a 50-50 or where they've got the high ground because now he can get above. He can then push him if he wants to with the MP5 or just sit and hold this rooftop and wait it, wait it out. Decides to push him. Um, I think he saw the guy drop down onto the right-hand side. It's Dukey. He's, like, he, he's, he's not going to miss something like that. And look at how quickly he drops into cover and those armor plates are going on straight away. There's no, there's no like kind of pause between, oh, do I plate now? It's, it's instant. And... Oh, and straight away just jumps into him, knows the player's down, and just, just wipes that squad. Um, that's why communication with your teammates is important as well. Once again, going straight back for his helicopter, so they've got that mobility around the map. Vehicles are not used enough, and if you combine it with trophy systems, if you can, uh, they're still so powerful, but helicopters don't have that negative of easily being able to be taken out by a C4, which I'm sure all of you have died at some point by someone running at you with a C4 and just kind of wiping your entire squad. You don't really get that with a helicopter as much. Once again, they've got the UAV up so they know where the nearest squad is and they're going to push thanks to the having the chopper, taking the high ground. Teammates, straight away, you'll notice every single engagement they're getting to, and this is what I'm learning from watching his gameplay, is they're always getting the high ground in a fight. So they never kind of jump in and have a disadvantage where they're going to be getting shot from above. They've always got that advantage. And just here's the enemy player, use that MP5 close quarters and this just picks up another kill. Something you'll notice with top players as well is how they use the buy station. You'll notice he can easily buy a self-revive. He doesn't. He buys a UAV, so he's got more information on where enemy players are going to be. They're not planning on getting down, so they don't want to spend four and a half grand on a self-revive where it's not a guarantee that you're going to get yourself back up, especially as they tend to split and go off solo. Having that information of where enemy squads are is way more useful, and it's, it's helped him pick up an additional kill because of that. Uses a growl for that mid-range combat. Um, and it's also the way that he's moving around the map. He's always kind of like kind of slide cancelling. He's always kind of jump shotting around, kind of making himself as difficult to hit even when he's not in a gunfight. Um, and then just pushed him with that MP5 and just... It, it, there's, a, there's only one outcome. Dukies is coming out on top. Straight away into a vehicle. They've got a UAV up. He knows the enemy squad's coming in from the gas. This is where you play the gas's edge. Circle's closing. Um, enemy players have to come straight towards you. And you've got an, you've got an instant advantage because all anyone's thinking about this stage... Oh, he's got quite lucky here. Hold on. Let's just let's watch this. All anyone's thinking at this stage is to get to safety and into the circle. So he's pushing the enemy squad. These guys are not on the UAV, which is quite interesting. So he just kind of is pushing in. He sees the C4. They just miss that detonation. That is unbelievably lucky, but straight away gets out of there. No point fighting because he, he doesn't have an advantage. He kind of dupes himself out, right? And, and kind of resets, gets an armor plate. This is really interesting in the way that he's approaching this. His teammates are coming over to help him out um, and just kind of just kind of even that match up. Uh, all right, he's pushing the building because once again, this is going to give him high ground. And also, if they start pushing the building, he's going to have a bit more control at close range with his MP5, which is which is good to see. See? Straight away. This, this is how to play an engagement. His teammates got the high ground behind. They've now got a pinch on. He's, stuck, he's going to be stuck in this building. Easy, easy kills, slides, does that slide in, picks up the first kill, sees the second on the wall, 
Um, just not, so he knows there's at least one more player. It's tagged. Oh, he's got downed. He's got downed and thirsted. But, but right, on the plus side, his teammates will probably see, he'll still get those two kills because his teammate will pick up that third. But let's just, let's just watch that again. Just see, see, see what he could have done to not get taken down in that situation. So picks up this kill here. Kind of opens himself up to the wall. Doesn't know where the enemy player is. Um, and for the first time this entire game, he opened himself up without any bit of cover or like situation where he can come out on top. If you notice, he just, he's, the enemy player's just got a clear shot onto his right. If he's got a good aim. He's going to pick that kill up, uh, which he does. And Dukies goes to the gulag. 18 kills before he's gone to the gulag. It's insane. All right, let's see how he approaches this. He's using the uh, the pistol, which had now gone in the recent update, but pretty solid. Just kind of snaps on, wins that fight nice and comfortably. Uh, it's a fair one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, he's seen someone be brought back. All right, this this is going to be interesting. Does he, So he's not... Oh, so this is really interesting to me. So a lot of players would have still gone straight for the, for the loadout drop, but he's seen someone be brought back and has decided just to play a little bit slower and get himself get himself a weapon. He downs one. All right. And then, just, then he just dupes out. Okay. So whole another squad there. He knows he's only got a PKM. He's he's got to play this very care carefully, to be honest. All right. Is he getting pushed? He's using the wall as cover. Sees the enemy player. Snaps on straight away. Gets a few shots off. It's hard because he's got no mobility with the PKM. So he can't be as aggressive as we've seen him with using how he's been using the MP5. Um it's always this kind of that slide jump shot. So interesting to see. But his teammate once again, flown with the chopper, keeping a hold of it the entire game, got the high ground, and they've got an advantage in this team fight. He, don't, he doesn't need the growl of the MP5. He's just got this floor loop PKM still downing and wiping entire squads. Okay. Oh, he's inside. Is he going to get killed? He's, he's been taken out. But his teammate now knows the location. Uh, as, as that is the worst way to get taken down, to be honest. But it's, it shows having a good team is still important. You may be dropping 40 kill games, but at points you're going in, in like a game like Warzone, it's so fast paced and you're going up against so many players and so many gunfights, you need to get bailed out by your team once in a while. Big advantage is he can now just go straight and drop on the loadout drop. So he's got his classes back and he's with, with his team who have a load of cash is he can get plates and get back up to full strength. And he's going to start being able to like kind of ramp up his kills again. Because there's 61 players left. He's on 21 kills. Is uh, going to be 19 in a very short period of time. So even after they visited the Gulag, they're not getting self-revives. They're still focusing on getting UAVs just to get that map information, using vehicles to get around as quickly as they can. That is one of the biggest consistencies I've seen uh, with his gameplay. And he's just pushing in straight with the MP5. One's down, no interest in that guy. It's not, he didn't see himself revive, so he's pushing into the squad. Most players will try and spend a little bit of time to thirst the opponent. He's not. He's just getting straight in there, getting into the fights. Um, got quite lucky there, actually. You know, he's going to get... He, he got downed. Hold on. What's he doing? So this is this is interesting. I think he thinks the enemy player is running away just based off that angle. So jumps around, gets molotov and um, he burns himself, but then runs into the fire. So even some of the best players make mistakes in some of the best gameplays that you're going to see in Warzone. All right, once again, he's got a UAV, didn't buy a self-res, even though he's had the Gulag, and he's going straight for it. So he sees them uh, in the uh, in this tool building over here, and just it just shows how powerful the MP5 is. They've also been really lucky getting the bounty contract and it landing on him. I mean, they're going to get extra cash so they can buy more UAVs, and maybe, like, I personally would get a self-revive at this point in time, but... We'll see how it goes. Use stun grenade just makes it so easy to pick up that kill. And before he even goes up there, he's plating straight away. That is one thing I've noticed so much with these like top players is they plate so quickly. Gets taken out there. He got really, uh, really unlucky to be honest. Let me just let me just have a look at this. So he gets the first kill, right? Takes a couple bits bits of damage and then starts plating. So if we look here, he's plate he's plated up and he ends up losing this gunfight because. If you notice, let's just let's just go through this like very slowly. Is if if you notice, is he go he goes into a sprint, goes for the shot, and he just loses that fraction of a second. And because the guy is holding the top of the stairs, uh, not much he can do. Very very unlucky. All right, you can see the vengeance. He's been brought back by his team, and he knows he wants to kill the person that was camping upstairs. So he, he knows his gun's downstairs. 
Breaks the window, which is a little bit surprising, but just grabs a gun as quickly as he can. Oh, he ran upstairs. This is interesting. All right, he's got his stuff. Oh, he sees him on the UAV, gets that down. And it was a smart play by the other player to move to move buildings, but just because they've got UAVs, guy didn't have ghosts. There was a, there wasn't much of a chance there. All right, some fresh armor plates. Is he going to go back to his body and get his stuff? That's that, that's the big question. Use that time. All right, he's been shot. From the roof, gets the kill. Sees the enemy player. Oh, nice. I think that's one of the big things I noticed. It's knowing when to use the MP5 and when to use the ground switch between the two. It's like making sure you're using those weapons at the um, most optimum distances. So MP5 when you're moving around the map to get that extra mobility and then the growl for like those medium to long range fights. Um, like while the MP5, if you're ever in a fight inside a building, that's where you're pretty much going to come out on top with it every single time based off of this gameplay. All right, so there's 40 players left now. The zone's coming in and they're holding the gas. So, so person got on top of the building. So he's just going to pause because he's going to get pushed off. Knows he's going to have the high ground, sees the parachute, uh, and it's really smart. There's easy kills because they're forced by the gas. This is why you always want to get zone control as much as you can. You'll notice he had the high ground on top of that building there, dips out of the fight, then re-engages when he knows the other players had to jump off from the gas. So really, really smart play. Um, see someone that buy station uses his airstrike just to kind of either push them off the roof or just give him a chance to reposition. What's really interesting is he's taking quite a big risk here, even though like, he's he's used that ladder with not really knowing what's behind him. Um, so he can get the high ground. Um, he's seen it as a viable risk just to get the high ground on this fight uh, and also potentially get a bounty in it as well. And it's, it's paid off. And then he can just drop down. He switches the MP5 because he knows he's going to be in a close range fight. And that gets just two more kills. Always be thinking about that. It's like, do I have an advantage advantage in this fight? What should I be using? Do I need to be using my assault rifle or use, uh, use the SMG? And because of amped, you can switch between the two so quickly that you're never going to be at a disadvantage because of it. All right, so they've pushed uh, the top of train station, which is one of the best positions in the map. But another squad has already got the higher ground. So it's really, really hard to push here. Um, once again, communicating with the team so you know exactly what's going on. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how they decide to approach this because you cannot push that building safely. So Jukies has just gone, yep, no, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to reposition and live to fight another day. It's not, it's not worth trying to force a fight. And it's what you'll notice with the top players is it's it's always playing percentages is do I have a high percentage chance of coming out on top here or do I just bail out? OK, really interesting there is he picks both his guns up and what what perks wait, what perks did he go for? So he went for a ghost ghost perk. So straight there, use the extra loadouts once you've got your weapons to make sure you get perk two. switch overkill out for either ghost or restock of the two I'd advise to to go for. Gets another stun from that as well. Interesting. He didn't just start shooting straight away. He was just checking if there were other teammates nearby. So that is that is so clever. This is all right. We're just going to point this out. So most people, second they've got a shot like that, just start shooting. He's got to the crest of the hill so he can see if there's other teammates, so he can take more of them down at once without them having a chance, and then just, just starts unleashing up top. Gets reload off. Knows he's got one down and saw the other guy go to the left. So finishes that kill. Just. This is the stage of the game that you kind of want to be finishing kills off because it's more than likely that they will uh, have self-revive. Okay, sees the other player, uses that stun grenade there. All about increasing that chance of him not taking any damage because he doesn't want to waste time plating here. Just just pick, picking him up left, right and center. Right, he's pushing the outside of the circle. He's, he's had some comms from his teammates so he knows to push in this direction. He's not doing this blindly. He's just, he's just scanning the enemies. This is such good gameplay to watch. Straight away, pulls off the flank. And you're never going to get easier kills than that, right? His teammate had pulled the focus, right? So if you know, if you look at the minimap on the top left, his teammate YA is taking the gunfire. Dukies then pulls off the perfect flank, switches the growl because he knows it's going to be mid-range and just gets two easy kills there, which were pinning down his teammate as well. Then once again, Switches to the MP5 because he knows he's closing those distances and closing those gaps. Uh, and with double time as well, able to close it so quickly with that combination. They know there's only a few people left now. Six people left and he's five kills away from the 40 bomb. So he needs to kill pretty much everyone left in this game. 
uh, to, to be able to get that 40 kill game, which is, which is uh, insane. Using the MP5 just to close the gap. Interest. It's, it's, it's all about waiting. So he knew he hadn't been spotted here. Right. I just, I just want to show this because this is the stuff that you need to be thinking about when you're playing Warzone. Right. He's not been spotted. Knows he hasn't. Doesn't put some shots because the guy behind the wall there would have a map position advantage. It's not going to be as easy a kill. Waits for him to hop over, guns him down, and it, there's no chance. This is the stuff that you see the top players do. Saw the first player go to the left, straight away duped out, and plates straight away. There is no pause in that plating. It's it's instant. Um, and then the other teammates gone for it. Oh, just MP5 triple kill, perfect. All right, all right, let's just, let's just watch that game. We have to we have to watch these plays because is he played it so so well. They may they might have self revives at this stage, so he tries to Thurston before, but pulls off the flank, gets that kill. That guy must have had a self revive and just gets gets a triple, and he's now one kill away, final person um, to be able to get that forty bomb. Spots him. Okay, so he's this is this is a difficult push because he's got no cover, so he's dipped out. Oh. Oh no! Wait, there's two people left. There are two people left in this game. Ritz has gone for the revive. He's like, this is that must be that must have been a nerve wracking moment when you know you're on for a 40 kill game and you've just got dropped on 39. But plates. This is always a really hard push because it's such open ground. There's not much you can do. Um, but plates whilst he pushes into a tree. It's now a 50 50 fight. Oh, just, these are the situations that you don't want to get into. Just, just pre-aiming that 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 kind of tree trunk, just so he can get that first shot off. Gets it, picks up the final kill for forty kills and eleven thousand seven hundred damage. That was insane. Let's just watch our last kill game. But guys, Jukies is one of the best players in the world right now. He's won the hundred K Syndicate Sundays tournament, dropping thirty three kills in the tournament on the finals. He's dropped a forty kill game, consistently dropping thirty kills. So do go ahead and follow him on Twitch.tv. There will be a link down in the description below. Absolute beast and uh, a legend for sending me this gameplay. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new. Smash the thumbs up button for forty kills. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of Benny's Bootcamp. And I'll see you next time.